So in the last video I showed you how to basically go from Google to uh, first Grasshopper plugin in 10 minutes just by installing Visual Studio and writing a little bit of C-sharp code. In this video I want to explore the, the Grasshopper component itself. I want you to be able to create one from scratch as you will see and in that way probably learn what the components of it are, like how it's created, what it means and so on. For the bit more detailed explanations about the programming tools themselves, I will refer you to one of my uh, programming courses that are free uh, if you want to uh, continue to deepen your knowledge and after this one we will have a lot more videos that explore this subject of programming not only in Grasshopper and Rhino but as you will see in other software like Revit for example. So be sure to subscribe so you can follow up and uh, see you at the computer. So let us start by looking at what we will follow, right? So let's uh, let us Google Lino de developer like we usually do. Go to the developer website, go to Grasshopper and there here where you have, you see your first component. We're going to press there on Windows because uh, I'm using Windows. And there at the end, uh, there is like this simple component. And in this article, you will basically see how to create a component from scratch. And this is what I will follow and throwing in a couple of explanations um, along the way just so that you uh, realize what we're doing and how we're doing it. So I have a folder here on my desktop GH where I created my first Grasshopper plugin and for that video uh, you can see in the description probably I will show it on the screen as well you can watch that where I talk about the very first step like installing Visual Studio and stuff like that we're not going to do that at this very moment <coughs> we're going to open the Visual Studio that we already have with the uh, extensions already installed that I explained there and we will create a new project and because we installed those extensions we will have this grasshopper assembly for Rhino 3D here in C sharp and I will go next and I will say um, component from scratch you can put whatever you want as the name of your project it will be saved on the desktop in this uh, GH folder as you can see here and then I will uh, create this project. So it will ask me about some um, characteristics, some parameters. And as I have told you, we can leave the default values. Uh, we can uh, put Rhino 7 for now. And we are going fi to finish up. And uh, if you saw the last video, let me pull this in. This is what we got. If you saw the last video, you saw that uh, you have a uh, component from scratch info which is your plugin info it has a unique ID and a couple of other things that are used to register your uh, uh, plugin in the in Grasshopper in Rhino and then there is this uh, component like an empty component that you can use as, as a first component in your plugin but this is exactly what we are not going to follow now and we are going to uh, create one from scratch that means that we are going to uh, uh, right click on our project here let me zoom this a little bit so that you can see more of the things. And then I will go to uh, add a new item or add class. It's the same thing. I can just uh, choose a, a new class if I go to new item. And then here I will say um, whatever. Let's go with a standard, right? Let's go with a hello world. And what, uh, ha what happened here is we created a class, a new class called hello world and it is within the namespace of our plugin so i know that if you're a beginner these, ter these terms uh, might be a bit confusing at the beginning that's why i encourage you to go to uh, to proarchitectteachable.com which is my website with my uh, online courses and then you will see my C Sharp Level 1 course or C++ Level 1 course for Rhino, Rhino. But what you will also see there is this C Sharp or C++ Basics, which are completely free. So you, you just need to uh, register and then you have the access uh, to this set of videos where I explain the basic concept behind object oriented programming. And then we go into the C sharp uh, nitty gritties like statements, variables, arrays, and so on and so on, which will uh, make you understand these basic principles, right? I talk about classes there. I talk about namespaces there. You can see video 18 is classes and so on. So if you need to brush up on those basics, I'm not going to go over them here, but 
<coughs> what we will do is uh, create a component, grasshopper component from scratch. So we will delete all these namespaces uh, because we don't need them at the moment. And if you remember uh, from the last video, uh, in our packages we have grasshopper by default. That's the part of this template that we are using. That means we have a lot of these namespaces that belong to that, uh, to that assembly, to that DLL. And one of them that we will need here is grasshopper.kernel. So you have to add that and then we will have to access to some of the basic grasshopper functionality. The first important thing to uh, change is that we, this class will not be internal, it will be public, right? So that uh, this class has to be visible everywhere and that's why it has to be public. Again, these things are explained in my uh, free C Sharp basics, so I will just brush over uh, those things quickly. Second, classes can be inherited. In our case, we have to inherit a class from something. That something belongs to this kernel and it's called GH component. So that is uh, another class. And if you see here in the description, it says inherit from this class if you wish to create a custom component. And it says note that you must provide a public empty constructor with, which calls the base class constructor. We, if you don't know what this means, it can sound confusing. It's again some uh, basic uh, things that, that I explained in the video, but we will go through it shortly now. You see that here it says that uh, hello world, let me see if you can, if you can look at, at this error down, it says hello world does not implement inherited abstract member and so on and so on. This means that this is an abstract class and it has some things that have to be uh, overridden. That means that they, it's, it's made like a template so that you, when you inherit from it, you have to override a couple of things. You have to put functions that... Uh, you have to put functions inside your class. And you can solve this relatively easily, but by right clicking here on hello world, quick actions, and you can implement the abstract class. So what it does, it automatically generates for you all these things um, that you need to overwrite. And if you saw the first video, now everything looks familiar because we have these input parameters for our component, we have our output parameters, and we have to uh, solve, we, we can solve the instance which is basically the work that component does by taking the input parameters and doing something and generating the output parameters. So let's go back to that warning that we got here that, that, that says you must provide a public empty constructor which calls the base class constructor. A constructor is basically a function whenever you create an instance of a class this function uh, is called and it tells us how to construct this, uh, the, the, this um, instance of a class. This is much more easier explained on some basic examples, which I do in those videos, so I won't do that here, but you, the, the constructor has um, the same name as the class, and then it tells us that we have to inherit from the base, and we have to call the base constructor, which means that we, when we say this base and this, let's finish this up, now we are calling the constructor of the parent, so of this parent class. And this parent class constructor takes a couple of things that will help us define our component. If I open the bracket here again, this IntelliSense will help us by telling us we need a name for our component, a nickname, a description, and then the category and subcategory. I explained in the other video uh, uh, more about the categories and subcategories. Uh, let's say... Um, Let's call this second component, right? I'm not uh, being creative at the moment, and let's give it a nickname, which is what we will you, you will see in that component when it opens. Let's say S C, and then here you can give it a slightly um, wider description because that will have uh, that will be seen when the user hovers hovers over it. My second component, and then if you want to have your own category. Uh, you can put your own and if you want it to be a part of an existing grasshopper category you have to check there and put there uh, and take one from there so i will i will show you that in a in a minute when we launch this so let's see this is again i will add my name and then i will add miller sub something similar to what i did before so now we inherited this and let's try to build this project right so i go say build build the solution it says here that it succeeded so this should theoretically work. If you uh, can see here, it says that uh, at a particular location, it generated a component from scratch 
dot gha this is basically a dll with a different extension and it's a grasshopper assembly it's a grasshopper um, plugin there is a thing we have to do uh, every component has to have a unique identifier so you, this plugin itself has a unique identifier when it's being registered in rhino and this uh, component also needs one and if, if you see at the moment uh, if we try to start this, we will, uh, we will get an exception because we still, still did not uh, define this. So we have to define this, right? And so instead of uh, all of this, we are going to delete it. We're going to open the curly brackets and we will say uh, get. We will not explain uh, getters and setters. Uh, again, that's explained in my uh, class. And we will use this... Uh, suggestion that C-sharp give us to return a new uh, a unique identifier. In Visual Studio, in Tools, you can go here, you can create uh, identifier, you can use this uh, number 5 here, you can copy it, you can just paste it here shortly down because all you need is uh, this in the brackets, you can paste it here, you can delete this, We need a semicolon and that's it. Now our component has a unique identifier and we and Rhino and Grasshopper will be able to register it. Now, as you see, input parameters, output parameters, solving the instance, they are all throwing out exceptions now. So we actually have to do something there. And um, if you go to uh, the example that we are following and that I showed you, David here gives you a, a simple text parameter as an input and gives you a text parameter as an output. And then the solver routine just simply uh, reverses the, um, the, the characters. As you can see here, uh, it reverses the array of characters. So you can type anything and at the, as a result, you will get a reverse sentence. So let's do something simple, right? We will do some crazy geometry later on. Now we're just trying to create a simple component from scratch, right? So let's do... Uh, Let's add a line, right? A line parameter. Let's say line one. Uh, we'll give it, give it a nickname of L1. Set line one for intersection. Let's say we intersect two lines and we say it's a single item. And then we create a second line. It's something like that. It will be line two, line two, line two for intersection. And we will assume that the result will be a, a point. We're not going to go inside uh, now into speculating what if it's a line and so on. We can cover those things later on. But let's assume now we'll, we'll get a single point parameter. So this has to be a point parameter. And we will say it's a intersection result. Let's say P intersection result. And we, as I said, we assume it is going to be a single point. We're not going to cover multiple possibilities right now. And now we have to solve the, solve the instance. And if you remember from the first video, we need some variables where we're going to keep our uh, instances. So let's say line one. And we will have line two. Now follow me. Let, let's go do it like this. I will uh, access this uh, data access object. And I will say get data and I will take the first uh, uh, item in the array, which is the number zero, which is the, that's the first uh, item in the array. And by reference, I'm going to pass line one and that it will give line one some value. Of course, here it says that the uh, local variable is unassigned. In C Sharp, we actually need to assign some memory to, to it. So let's create a new line, empty line. There, now these lines are, uh, have some memory assigned to them and we can pass them into this get data and actually store this into this variable, whatever the user selects in, in Rhino. What we want to do here is we, we want to check if there is something here. So we will say if not, this is the not operator, the, the exclamation point, if this does not return anything, so if there is no input basically, we will want to return. So we want to write any mess error messages or anything like that. 
we just won't let the function be executed, right? So I will copy this here and, and uh, just change what we had. Element one and line two. So again, this uh, data access object helps us get the input data, to one of these two input lines. They are a part of an array and we access them by giving, the, giving it the position of the element in the array. In this case, this is zero. That's the line one and the element one is the second line. And it will store those lines into these variables here. If the user in the Grasshopper component did not input any lines, it will return, which means it, this function will not continue and it will simply um, not do any solving. If it does continue, we will want to use uh, something called intersection in this particular case. And then we will call, say, line, line, intersection. And let's see what it gives us. Line A is line 1, line A is line uh, 2. And we will have two output param parameters, uh, A and out double B, which are the parameters. Let's, let's hover to, to look at what it says. It will be true if points are found and false if the lines are numerically uh, parallel. So it will uh, give you a boolean as a result, true or false, if the intersection succeeded. And if it did, it will give, you, uh, give us a parameter. So every uh, line has a parameter space. So the first point uh, in this case should be zero and the last one should be one. And by getting a number between zero and one, we can check where that point is on the line. So we will check if this, we will put if here. So see if this entire section gave us true, then we will continue. If it didn't, we won't. And if it did uh, give us, we will try to find uh, uh, our point. So let's create one point. Let's call it result point. And it should be, we will take line one and say point at which parameter? We'll say parameter A. What we could also do is take line two and check point at B, we should get the same result, so it doesn't matter. And then we will finally set our result. I showed you this in the last video. We will set data. We only have one element in the output array, so we will take that one first element. And we will say we want to put a result point inside. And this should be OK because uh, our result is of type point 3D and we are looking for a point parameter. So this should work. We compiled and now let's debug this. Let's start the Rhino and see how it works. Now remember, if you saw the first video, we have to open, open the Grasshopper developer settings and we have to add a folder so that uh, Grasshopper knows where to look for our component. So we, we will enter our desktop, this GH folder, then this is our project, component from scratch. And inside there is this bin folder. That is what we will add. And then Grasshopper will be able to find our plugin, hopefully. Let's see. So, as you see, as a category I put Milos, if you remember. And as a subcategory, I put Miller sub. As in the previous video, I did not cover how to actually create this image here, how to, how to put an image into resources and have an image here. I guess we'll do that some other time as well. But if I press there and here, uh, you see our component. Uh, let's split the screen just to show you. So, Remember when we defined our component here in the constructor, we, had, we said it's called second component. This is the name here, second component. Then we said SC for the nickname. This is the SC you see here. When I hover it over it, uh, it says my second component. That's the description that you see on the left. And then there is the category of Milos and sub Milos, which is exactly here what you see. Category of Milos and uh, sub Milos. And our two input parameters L1 and L2, you can see them here. And our output parameter point P is here. If I cover, you will see that it says it's a point. I mean, you will see the icon will show you it's a point and it says empty point parameter. And the L1, you see that it's a line because that's how we defined it. 
And if we say we need a, two lines, let's draw two lines. And let's set this to this one. Set this, nope, set this one to this one. If I put in here, nothing will happen. The point will still remain empty, there won't be any errors. That is because I told the script that if either one of these two lines does not exist, this is this not parameter, uh, then I shouldn't do anything. I should just return and stop here. If I did a breakpoint here, uh, it would stop here. As you see, this, this function get data returns true on success and false on failure. So in our case, this second line get data is returning false and that's why we're returning here but if i put another line here then suddenly you can see the point has been generated here and if i hover you can see that, uh, that i have the coordinates of the point and of course i can bake the point and here it is so this is our small component that does the intersection of two lines let's uh, stop debugging And we made this component entirely from scratch by creating a new class, a new C-sharp class that did not know what it does or to whom it belongs. And we made it be inherited from a GH component, which can be found here in Grasshopper kernel. And then we went on. You can see here that I have two more uh, namespaces included here, Rhino Geometry and Rhino Geometry Intersect. That was automatically put there uh, once I uh, used this intersection here and the point. If that is not automatically done by you, uh, in, in your example, you should add them manually because if you don't have these namespaces, you won't be able to access Rhino Common. So inside the Grasshopper, there is also the Rhino Common DLL and that has all these Rhino functions that do intersections, have geometry types and so on and so on. So I will stop this video for now because it's again getting too long. But I wanted to show you how you can really, really create a component from scratch. And I hope this uh, helps you understand a little bit more of the structure of it and how it actually works. And in the future, we can, we can create a very cool and complex components with uh, multiple items coming as an input, multiple uh, uh, items coming as an output, and also different uh, solutions. But because imagine if you're intersecting a curve with a curve, you can have uh, multiple curves as a, as a result, or you can have multiple points and so on. So that all has to be handled. But let's leave that for the future. So thanks a lot and uh, see you soon and stay free. I hope you like this because we will explore uh, this hands-on programming much more in the future and not only for Rhino and Grasshopper, but also other software like Revit or even Unreal Game Engine. Anyway, be sure to subscribe so you can follow up uh, on those videos and uh, be sure to check out the courses page, the proarchitect.teachable.com that I showed you where you can uh, check out the, the videos for free uh, that explain to you the basics of C Sharp or even C++. There will be also other courses coming up on that page so you will want to definitely enroll there and register just so that you can uh, stay up to date. So see you soon and stay free.